equation, you know, like from Algebra 1, a normal equation might be, you know, x plus 3 uh, is equal to 4. And you know how to solve that equation. You know that the goal of this equation is to solve it for the unknown value of x. That's what you, that's what you, you already know because you've, you've done algebra, right? And you know how to do that. You pull the 3 over and subtract and you get the answer, right? Well, a differential equation will not involve the value of the unknown x by itself. A differential equation might involve the derivative of x. Maybe with respect to time, let's say. Plus 3 is equal to 4. Right? So this equation, the second one here, congratulations, you've just looked at your very first differential equation. It's just simply an equation. You know, it has numbers, it has an equal sign, it's plus, I mean, that's just like an equation. But instead of x, it's the derivative of x. So we don't, I mean, ultimately what we're trying to solve for here is x. That's the thing you got to realize. This equation is, is a derivative, and ultimately when you solve it, you are still trying to find the value of x. Right? But... Um, Obviously, x is wrapped up inside of a derivative here, so it's a little bit harder to get at. And so we're going to learn about the different ways in which you can do that. So that is what a differential equation is. It's simply an equation that involves the variable that you're hunting for. And so what you're going to find out, though, in this section, will be not too bad to solve for it because it's an introductory section. But what you'll find out is that when you get into real differential equations, you can't simply solve for x like that. You can't simply just isolate the variable and take an integral and get the answer. It just doesn't, it's, you'll find out when we get there that you're not going to be able to do that. But we're going to crawl before we can walk, and so we're going to uh, take some easier problems first. So in this introductory section, I want to show you a differential equation that every one of you guys have probably seen. Uh, I, would I would venture to guess that everybody has seen, and that is the famous equation f is equal to m. A, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, this does not look like a differential equation because you don't see a derivative in there, but it is a differential equation. And for those of you who think hard enough, you'll realize that this is a differential equation because this acceleration, the thing that we call acceleration, is really a second derivative of position. So in physics, they don't really go into this differential equations business because it's too complicated. It, it burdens the material too much for you know, a freshman to, to, to soak up differential equations on top of soaking up the physics. But now you've reached a point in your you know, learning where I'm going to tell you that some of these things that looked so simple before were in fact really differential equations. So let's go and look at this some more. If I take this equation and I solve for A, the acceleration, which we, all, we know ahead of time is going to be basically a derivative, then this acceleration uh, is equal to force over mass, right? We just solve by dividing by m, so that's the acceleration. Uh, now, this, for any given problem, is just a number. Just a number. In, in my particular case. Because I'm saying, what if I have you know, a 10 kilogram mass, and what if I push him with 50 newtons of, of force? So I can take the 50 newtons of force and the 10 kilograms, divide them, and what I'm going to get on the right-hand side is just simply going to be a number for whatever problem I have in front of me. The acceleration, the thing that describes the motion, is what I'm really mostly interested in in these physics problems, and of course I'm, I'm teaching it here as well. So the one thing that you need to realize is that the acceleration, A, the thing that we call acceleration, is simply the derivative of the velocity of something with respect to time, the change in the velocity, the change in the speed, right? And the velocity is also the change of position, so when you put all those two things together, the acceleration is the second derivative of the position with respect to time. And so this little indication here, you know from calculus with the two there, that means second derivative. So this is just saying in words what I already told you is that the acceleration is the second derivative of the position because if I draw you know, a meter stick here and I watch a marble traveling down there, if I look at how, fat, how, how far it goes in a given time, that's the first derivative, the change in position with respect to time. That's going to be, uh, well, the change in position with respect to time, that's going to be the velocity. If we take the derivative again, the change in velocity, we get what we call acceleration. I think we all have a pretty good idea about it because we drive cars and we accelerate. All right, so when we use this information, when we use this information, we put it all together, then what we're going to do is take this guy, and let's bring him down here. 
So we will say the acceleration is simply the second derivative of the position with respect to time, right? And that's equal to f over m, which we just said is a number for whatever problem I'm using. So really, when you think about it, I could just spit this out and show you this and say, ladies and gentlemen, this is a differential equation, and this thing right here might be 10 because it's the ratio of the force to the mass of my object, or it could be 15, or it could be 19. So the differential equation here is you know, d squared x dt squared equals a number. That is a differential equation. It happens to describe the motion of an object of a certain mass, and you push it with a certain force. And so obviously when we solve it, this is the acceleration, and we want to end up, we want to end up at the end of the day figuring out where this thing is. So we want to solve for x. So the whole course of differential equations is you're going to have lots of equations that are going to have derivatives of some variable with respect to either time or something else, usually with respect to time, but a lot of times it'll be with respect to dy, with respect to x or something. Uh, anyhow, you'll have a derivative of something with respect to something else, and the goal is to calculate a function of this variable, x of t. That's what we're looking for in this case. So our solution, you know, might be x of t, you know, is equal to, you know, 2t or something. I mean, that's a function of t. I mean, that's not exactly what it is, but it could be something similar to that. All right, so congratulations. You've learned that something you've learned in physics a long, long time ago uh, is actually a differential equation. Now, how do we solve it? How do we solve this simple one? First of all, before we get to solving it, I want to show you a few things about this equation. So, this is an ordinary Uh, differential equation. And I'm going to write this as diff eq, diff eq, however you want to pronounce this. That's how I abbreviate differential equation. That's way too long to keep writing uh, out. The reason it is called ordinary, this is the word I'm going to underline, is because there are no partial derivatives. All right, no partial derivatives. So you need to memorize that because the course that you're taking right now, it may be called differential equations, your first course in differential equations, but really it should be called ordinary differential equations. Ordinary just simply means it's a straight derivative with respect to something else. There's no, there's no partial derivative of x with respect to time. The only time that you would ever have a partial derivative running around a function is if this function, if this uh, variable here that you actually have wrapped up in your derivative is itself a function of two variables. And that actually is really common when you get into real world problems because we live in a three dimensional world. So let's say I have a block here, a brick, right? And I may have a flame underneath it heating up the brick. And obviously the flame is on the bottom, so the bottom of the brick is going to be absorbing the heat, you know, a lot more than the top of the brick. And so the heat transfer, for those of you who are, you know, mechanical engineers or chemical engineers, the heat transfer, really the, the function of the heat is coming from the bottom and it's propagating throughout this brick coming up to the top. And it's a three-dimensional problem because this flame is like a point, right? And this block is this big thing over here. So obviously the heat transfer in the different directions is going to be different. It also depends on the material how much heat is transferred is, is a function of what the material is too, but it depends upon you know, where this heat source is and what direction you're looking because you know, here and very near the, um, the flame, you might have different heat transfer than you know, farther away at the top of the brick because the heat source is at the bottom. So in real problems, in real life, with three dimensions, it's very likely that whatever it is you're trying to describe, in this case I call it X, it could be the heat transfer you know, through a material. Or it could be the electric field in empty space, right? Or something like that. The real description of that guy is always going to depend on three dimensions. Um, unless you have a perfectly symmetrical problem, right? And so, in those cases, maybe it's okay to just talk about one variable. But most of the time, it's going to depend on more than one variable. So in those cases, you'll have a partial derivative to describe how the thing changes in this direction. And you'll have another partial derivative to tell you how it changes in that direction. And you'll have another partial derivative to tell you how it changes in that direction. If you have a differential equation with partial derivatives in there, it's called a partial differential equation. It's not called an ordinary differential equation. So that was a long-winded way of saying everything we learn in this course is going to be ordinary differential equation. You'll never see a partial derivative anywhere in this course because it's a more advanced topic. It's more complicated to solve even than these other ones we're going to learn in this course. You'll always see straight derivatives with respect to one and only one variable 
because the function that you have and that you're studying is only a function of one variable, right? And so